Hello, guys. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. How are you doing today? ¿Cómo están? Pretty Very good. well. Very Excellent. Good. Guys, I want to apologize first because my camera, it's not been, um, I mean, the computer is not recognizing the device for some reason. Um, I don't know what's going on, pero por eso es que no tengo la cámara on. I will share with you the message that, I mean, I restarted the computer like several times, but I couldn't, you know, no la pude hacer trabajar. Así que probably I, I need a new one uh, soon, but I'm going to start sharing my screen, guys, and we're going to continue working with um, the platform and the different, you know, sections that we have uh, in that specific unit, right? We are already working in section three. Right, and and um, we're going to have a, just a quick um, review of what we did yesterday. Um, yesterday, probably the, the most important topic was about um, defining and non-defining relative clauses, right? So um, I don't know if you were able to complete the exercises related to that in the in the platform, guys, because that's what we did yesterday. I don't know if if all of you were able to to complete that exercise specifically? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, very good, excellent. Today I just have one request and that is uh, for one of the sections um, on the platform. We will do that in just a moment. And right now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to pass the attendance. Just bear with me. I'm just, tengo tantas ventanas abiertas que mejor voy a cerrar todo lo que estaba acá. Give me a second. Okay, here we have Google Drive. Okay, it's loading. Está cargando ya. Okay. Es que mi, mi, mi lista es la casi la del final, casi la última soy yo. Por eso es que me tardo cuando busco la lista, chicos. I'm sorry. Okay, so. okay, let's begin. Today is uh, Tuesday, March 7th. Y comenzamos. Alba, dir por tal días. Here. Thank you. Uh, Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Present teacher. Thank you. Ana Francisca García Nieto. Present teacher. Thank you. Claudia Marcela Linares Urquía. Present. Thank you. Diego Anthony Melendez Mayen. Present. Thank you, Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present teacher. Thank you, Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Francisco Antonio Sánchez Jovel. Present. Thank you, Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Present. Thank you, Jose Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Present. Thank you, Jose Francisco Peña Peña. Jose Isaías Portillo Ramos. Present teacher. Present teacher. Ok, entonces dijo present José Francisco y so José Isaías, ¿verdad? Yes, yes, teacher. Ok, thank you. José Jovito Torres Amaya. Present, teacher. Thank you. Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. María Azucena Ayala de Flores. Present. Thank you. Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present, teacher. Thank you. Nady Ibis Méndez Alveño. Present, teacher. Thank you. Rafael Antonio Morales Martínez. Present. Thank you, Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Present. Thank you, Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you, Rosa María de Milagro Pérez de Paz. Present. Thank you, Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present. Thank you, uh, Jensi Marlene León López. Present, teacher. Thank you, and Zulma Beatriz Pérez Galdames. Present. Thank you so much. Okay, I really, really appreciate that. So let's move on to the platform. Give me a moment. I'm going to open it up so it can load and it's ready once we start with the information. Okay, so yesterday I was saying um, we were uh, given a definition 
right? Or at least giving an idea on how to identify defining and non-defining relative clauses, right? So we said that the defining relative clause defines or gives essential information about a noun, and the non-defining is the one that gives extra information or optional information about nouns. Y decíamos que la segunda, pues, es opcional, ¿verdad? Usted puede omitir esa información, and you will be able to have a complete sentence on its own. ¿verdad? Entonces, um, whenever you find it, right, eh, con relative clauses, yo ayer creo que les compartí en el chat, ¿verdad? Una, eh, un, una, un como cuadrito, ¿verdad? Eh, para que ustedes supieran identificar cuáles son, pues, esas palabras que utilizamos, esos pronouns que usamos, where, when, which, ¿Verdad? Entonces, um, it's important that you uh, identify them, right, so we can make up our sentences the right way. Okay, so here you have two examples. Yesterday also, um, I, you know, um, mentioned the information that the um, instructor gives in the video, right? Uh, she explains, you know, that the final relative clauses add information. Uh, about a noun or a noun phrase. And also in the non-defining clauses, she was saying that they describe a noun, but the information is not essential. Okay, um, that's uh, one thing that we need to um, consider when we are making our um, sentences. What else? También pues vimos la información del manual, ¿verdad? There you have again the um, a definition. Solo que aquí se va un poquito todavía más allá, right? Porque it mentions that a non-defined relative clause gives optional information about a noun and cannot begin with the pronoun that. Esta era la única en la que nosotros decíamos no usamos that y también hay un uso de comas, ¿verdad? And, and, and that's uh, important, right, to consider, okay? What else que más vimos ayer? Ese ejercicio que teníamos en, el, en, el, en la plataforma, pero, pero decíamos también que prácticamente el, lo que teníamos en, el, en, el, um, en la plataforma difería un poquito con el, el ejercicio en sí, ¿verdad? Porque el ejercicio pues nos pedía que, que identificáramos si era eh, defining o non-defining relative clause, ¿verdad? Entonces, ayer nosotros hicimos pues parte del ejercicio y pusimos en práctica lo que habíamos lo que habíamos hablado en la clase con respecto a esas oraciones específicamente, ¿verdad? Eh, bueno, le voy a presentar otro poquito de información. Just give me a second. I think I have here. Sorry, I think there's a dog parking outside. Mm, this is level... Advanced. Voy a abrir la otra presentación. Denme un momentito, chicos. Going to... ¿Qué más vimos ayer? Bueno, no llegamos acá, pero, ¿verdad? The instructor was giving you, um, like, the pattern, okay, for you to follow, right? A pattern that includes all those, um, you know, up sections in the sentences, right, that, that you have. For instance, right, we have here that the subject... Objects and possessive, ¿verdad? Um, these are the relative pronouns that are used in defining relative clauses, ¿ok? Entonces, todos los que ven aquí son los que utilizamos en las en los, um, relative clauses. Si es person, vamos a usar who. Si es cosa, vamos a usar which or that. Si es object, vamos a usar who or whom. Si es cosa, which and that. And then if it's place, where, if it's time, when, if it's reason, why. If we are using, you know, possessives, also, uh, if it's for a person, you're going to use whose. And if it's for a thing, you're going to use whose as well. Okay. What else? Well, uh, the relative pronouns in non-defining clauses, you know, the list is uh it's shorter, right? If you can, if you if you see the difference, these are the ones that we use in defining relative clauses, these relative pronouns. But take a look at the second list. In the non-defining clauses, we have only who and which. For object who, whom. For thing, we have which and for place where and possessive whose. Entonces, la lista se hace más chica, you see? 
And that's the reason why this gives only extra info, right? It, it only gives extra info and, and it doesn't go beyond. Y pues ahí fue donde nos pasamos ya al 3.2, que era el knowledge check, ¿verdad? El que, que mencionábamos ayer. I'm going to show you uh, more info on this. Give me a second. Bueno, ¿qué más? ¿Qué más podemos decir acerca de defining and non-defining relative clauses? Okay. Well, um, here we have read the sentences are the same or different. Veamos, chicos. Anne's sister, who is a tennis champion, visited her last weekend. Anne's sister, who is a tennis champion, visited her last weekend. So what's the difference between the two sentences? The comma. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Sorry, I was sipping some water. <laughs> I'm thirsty. So exactly, right? So the difference are the two commas over there, right? So question, has Ant got more than one sister? What do you think? Has Ant got more than one sister? A leer la oración, what do you think? Anne's sister, who is a tennis champion, visited yes. her last yes. weekend. Exactly. Yes. Si yo leo la oración, right, acá, she has one sister. Pero acá no, porque dice Anne's sister, who is a tennis champion, visited her last weekend. So has Anne got more than one sister? No. Because they are giving extra information about her only sister. Pero acá no. Acá la ausencia de comas me dice that actually this information is important. Esa información es importante porque aparentemente Ana tiene más hermanas, pero yo estoy hablando de la que is a tennis champion. So that person visited her last weekend, ¿verdad? Entonces, ¿qué más? Bueno, con define and relative clauses, ya habíamos dicho they give essential information. We don't use commas in them, ¿verdad? No hay uso de comas generalmente en las que son defining, ¿verdad? Anne's sister, who is a tennis champion, uh, visited her last weekend. The table whose legs are broken is at the back of the classroom. ¿Por qué no tiene comas? Porque hay muchas, o sea, si hay, si hay una mesa en el salón, hay varias. The table whose legs are broken is at the back of the classroom. Entonces, la información que yo estoy dando adicional de la mesa es importante porque estoy hablando de una específica y es esa, whose legs are broken. Este whose, guys, es el, el, el de posesión, la tabla cuyas... ¿verdad? Eh, patas están quebradas, está en la parte de atrás del salón. Entonces, nosotros esa es la traducción que le damos en español, ¿verdad? El libro cuyo autor es, ¿verdad? Salvadoreño, etc. Este whose es the possession. ¿Qué más podemos decir? Bueno, con respecto a las non-defined relative clauses, they give extra information, ¿verdad? Entonces, como dan extra information, we use commas in them. No hay necesidad de de dejarlo, este, perdón, hay necesidad de ponerlo en comas porque es extra, ¿verdad? O es información no importante. Anne's sister, who is a tennis champion, visited her last week. Entonces, va entre comas, because we're talking about that probably Anne has got only one sister, right? Charles Dickens, whose novel, Oliver Twist, we read last term, was born 200 years ago. ¿Por qué está entre comas? Porque es información adicional, whose novel Oliver Twist we read last, last term, ¿verdad? Cuya novela Oliver Twist fue la que leímos el, el semestre pasado, ¿verdad? Entonces, uh, eso está de más porque en realidad lo que él quería decir es que Charles Dickens was born 200 years ago. ¿verdad? Entonces, um, we already know that Charles Dickens wrote Oliver Twist. ¿verdad? Entonces, esa información está de más. Very important, non-definite relative clauses are also called non-essential relative clauses. You cannot omit the pronoun in non-definite relative clauses. That cannot replace who or which. Okay, si estamos hablando de personas, verdad, si estamos hablando de opciones, 
no podemos reemplazar that, ¿verdad? O no lo podemos usar para reemplazar who or which, ¿ok? Entonces, esa información se la voy a dejar ahí en, en WhatsApp también para que tengan eh, additional information, ¿ok? ¿Alguna pregunta hasta el momento, chicos? ¿Questions? No. Hagamos una cosa, ¿por qué no hacemos ejemplos? Ok, I would like you to create some examples. Um, please create two uh, defining and two non-defining relative clauses, ok? I'm going to give you five minutes, ok? Five minutes for you to uh, create your defining and non-defining. Si lo siente que está muy complicado, muy, muy challenging, just create one and one. But if you can create two and two, two defining and two non-defining relative clauses, that will help us to have a better understanding on this topic, okay? Entonces, I'm going to give you five minutes, okay? Vamos a ver. Bye. Entonces, your five minutes begin right now, guys. Going to go back here. Okay. So you can take a look at the examples. So two examples with defining, two examples with non-defining relative clauses. Cuando ya las hayan terminado, por favor, váyanse al chat. Y ahí necesito que las digiten. Sí, para que vayamos revisando entre todos.
Thank you, guys. I can see that we have some examples here already. It says, I called my sister who lives in Chalatenango. That's the defining. Okay, very good. So that's the one that Jose Isaias is sharing. My sister who lives in Chalatenango is younger, non-defining. Okay. Now, in this case, if I read sentence number one, right, uh, I called my sister who lives in Chalatenango, I understand that you have more than one sister, right? And that you are talking about one specifically, meaning that that information is important. Then the second sentence, my sister who lives in Chalatenango is younger, eh, that's a non-defining. ¿Por qué? Porque estoy hablando de mi única hermana que es más joven que yo, but I'm giving extra information who lives in Chalatenango. Luego Rafael dice September 15th is the celebration of independence. Mm, solo que allí nada más tenemos una cláusula, nos falta la relative clause, ¿verdad? Solo tenemos una mitad, necesitaríamos completarla con otra mitad. Uh, ah, podría ser algo así, mire. Veamos. Um, September 15th, right? Um, which I think it's like this, which is Independence Day, Independence Day in El Salvador, right, is my birthday. By aquí, tenemos una non-defined relative clause. ¿Por qué? Porque esta información, which is Independence Day in El Salvador, esa información, Es extra. ¿Por qué? Porque los salvadoreños ya sabemos que es el 15 de septiembre, es el día de la independencia. Entonces, September 15th, which is Independence Day in El Salvador, is my birthday, right? So, or I can say something like on September 15th, which is Independence Day in El Salvador, I celebrate my birthday. Y ahí sí tendríamos una eh, non-defining relative clause porque esta información es adicional, extra y para los salvadoreños pues sería como obvia, ¿verdad? Entonces esta sí ya la podríamos poner acá. Vamos a ver, tenemos más. Dice, dice José Francisco, uh, the blue car which is in the repair shop is my favorite. Ok, muy bien. En ese caso, ¿verdad?, eh, Si yo lo pongo entre, entre comillas, es porque es información adicional. So, si me preguntaron, what's your favorite card? Y vine yo y dije, the blue card is my favorite. That's okay. But if you put it in between commas, it's because that information is not relevant. Right? E, y algo que yo les mencioné ayer, chicos, cuando nosotros estamos usando eh, las, las clauses, Todo va a depender de qué, cómo nosotros veamos las cosas, ¿de acuerdo? Entonces, si para mí eso no es importante, entonces lo dejo entre comillas. Pero si lo es, entonces si para mí es importante, entonces debo de dejarlo afuera. Um, El Salvador is beautiful. There are great beaches. Try to eat pupusas. Vaya. Pero acá no tenemos, again, una relative close. Um, vamos a ver. Uh, let me think. How can I use this information to create a sentence? Uh, ah, okay. El Salvador. El Salvador. Ah. El Salvador. That is well known for uh, pupusas or for, um, yeah, pupusas, right, has beautiful, beautiful beaches, right? Ahí sí, okay. Ahí sí, porque yo estoy dando información adicional del nombre siempre, que en este caso es El Salvador. El Salvador, that is well known for pupusas, or for its pupusas, por sus pupusas, ¿verdad? Has beautiful beaches, right? Ahí sí. Ahora sí tenemos una non-defining relative clause. El Salvador, comma, that is well known for its pupusas, 
comma, has beautiful beaches. Entonces, ¿cómo puedo comprobar yo que esta es una non-defining? Porque si yo quitase esto, mi oración tiene sentido. El Salvador has beautiful beaches. Y si lo pongo, también tiene sentido. ¿De acuerdo? Entonces, la vamos a poner acá en, la, en el chat. Donde me quedé... Veamos. Wow, han hecho bastante, chicos. Eh, veamos, Claudia, Marcela. The man who lives next door is a soldier. Ok, very good. Vaya, ahí entiendo yo que Claudia Marcela la ha dejado así porque hay varias personas, ¿verdad? Pero yo estoy hablando de una específica. Y es the man who lives next door is a soldier. Right? Entonces aquí es una defined relative clause porque donde nosotros vivimos generalmente pues van a haber varios, varios chicos, ¿verdad? Uh, males around, right? So I'm talking about that man specifically. The car that I bought last month is already giving me problems. Muy bien. So in that case, right? In that case, si la otra persona no conoce ese detalle en particular, Entonces, es una defining relative clause. The car that I bought last month is already giving me problems, ¿ok? Si de repente yo estoy hablando con mi mamá y ella sabe que yo se lo compré el mes pasado, entonces estaría de más y estaría entre, comi entre comas. The car, comma, that I bought last month, comma, is already giving me problems. O, the car is giving me problems. Y, pues, mi mamá ya va a saber que es el que yo compré el mes pasado. Non-defining relative clauses, my friend who lives in San Salvador is coming to visit me. Okay, muy bien. Probably I have a lot of friends, right, in, in San Salvador. And um, it's kind of not essential, you know, to say that he lives in San Salvador. The most important thing is that this person is coming to visit me. My neighbors who have a dog are very friendly. Okay. Bien, si yo lo dejé entre comillas es porque esa información no es importante. Yo solo puedo decir simplemente, my neighbors are very friendly. Muy bien. Define a relative close. María Elena is my best friend. Uh, María Elena is my best friend. Vaya. Si yo quiero usar esta como define a relative close, Sandrita, tendría que hacer algo así. Veamos. Su oración es, María Elena is my best friend. Bye. Veamos. Aquí es donde tengo que dar clic. Bye. Entonces, yo puedo decir algo así. María Elena is my best friend. Está perfecta. Pero, ¿qué detalle podemos agregar que sea un detalle importante para las personas? María Elena, who lives in Canada is my best friend. So it's important for me uh, that the other person that I'm talking with understands that this person doesn't live in the country. So Maria Elena, who lives in Canada, is my best friend. ¿Por qué lo digo? Porque nadie sabe ese detalle de mi mejor amiga. ¿Verdad? Entonces es importante que sepan que no es acá, that she lives in Canada. Y luego creo, Sandrita, que usted me mandó, María Elena, who is living in Las Vegas, is my best friend. Y esta está perfecta. ¿Por qué? Porque si usted lo dejó entre comillas, es porque la gente ya sabe que ella vive en Las Vegas. ¿Verdad? Entonces, la diferencia, chicos, está en que la información que yo estoy dando de más sea necesaria o no. Si es necesaria, entonces es una defining relative clause. Pero si es información adicional, obvia o que está de más, entonces es una eh, non-defining relative clause. Sigamos acá en el chat. My brother, who is an engineer, is doing home office. Mm -hmm. Ok, muy bien. Aquí veo yo que tenemos una coma. Yo creo que está bien. My brother who is an engineer is doing home office. O también si no es importante, si la persona ya sabe que mi hermano es un ingeniero, pues mejor entre comas, ¿verdad? Porque para que no sea información importante. My brother who is an engineer is doing home office. ¿Y cómo sé que la oración funciona perfecto? Porque si yo quito esto, la oración igual funciona bien. My brother is doing home office. ¿Sí? Bye. 
Next, uh, on September 15th, ah, esa es mía. <laughs> Cuba is an island which became to this, became to the socialist country in 1979. Bye. Okay, entonces aquí tenemos más información. De hecho, tenemos tres comas, ¿verdad? Eh, por ejemplo, uh, Cuba is located, uh, Cuba is located in the Caribbean, ¿verdad? Yes. Okay, very good. Okay, so in that case, what we are going to do is the following. We are going to take that particular detail, right? And we are going to include it here, right? So Cuba, right, that is an island located in the Caribbean. Caribbean, creo que lleva double, double B. Uh, became a socialist country in, y aquí quitamos esa coma, in 1959, okay? Entonces, acá, oops, aquí creo que me equivoqué, that, ahí está. So, Cuba, that is an island located in the Caribbean, became a socialist country in 1959. Cuba, which, creo que es which, verdad, creo que sí es which, which is an island located in the Caribbean, became a socialist country in 1959. Aquí sí. Aquí sí, este, ya me queda una non-defined relative clause porque la mayoría de personas probablemente va a asumir que sí, ¿verdad? It's an island located in the Caribbean. Entonces, no necesito poner esto. Lo importante es lo que yo estaba diciendo. Cuba became a socialist country in 1959. And that information will be additional information, ¿verdad? Veamos qué más. Uh, my friend who traveled Guatemala yesterday is sending a lot of pictures, dice Jensi. Ajá, muy bien, solo vamos a corregir algunas cosillas por acá. My friend, primero mayúscula, al iniciar una oración, ¿verdad? My friend who traveled to Guatemala yesterday is sending me a lot of pictures, period, at the end, right? Muy bien. Muy bien. Ahora bien, si yo le estoy contando esto a alguien que también sabe que mi amigo viajó a Guatemala ayer, entonces ahí va a ser información adicional porque él ya sabe. Pero si yo le estoy contando esto a mi mamá y ella ya sabe que esta persona, ¿verdad?, andaba en Guatemala, entonces vengo yo y digo, my friend is sending me a lot of pictures. ¿Por qué? Porque mi mamá ya sabe que fue a Guatemala ayer, but... If she doesn't know, my friend, right, who traveled to Guatemala yesterday is sending me a lot of pictures. ¿Verdad? Entonces, así es como funciona. Muy bien, vamos a ver la siguiente. Uh, dice Nady, Santa Ana, which is known as the Brown City, is rich in indigenous, indigenous, sí, ¿verdad? Indigenous culture which is known as the brown city. Okay, I like. ¿Por qué round? Ah, es morena, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Sí, yes. está, está difícil traducir eso, ¿verdad? Ajá, porque, yeah. It's rich in indigenous culture. Okay, very, sí, porque brunette es como morena, pero, pero de piel, pero la persona, ¿verdad? la chica brunette. Ok, but I think it's okay, pero eso está bien, me gusta, ¿verdad? Porque es algo que un salvadoreño muy probablemente ya sabe. Entonces, es non-defining porque no es essential information about what I'm saying. Muy bien. Luego tenemos defining, dice Alba, it, she's the person who helped me at the university. Ok, sí, porque ahí estoy describiendo a la persona y estoy dando información adicional de esta persona. Non-defining, dice Alba. We stopped at the surf city, which we had never visited before. Okay, I like it. Eh, luego dice Zulma, children who hate chocolate are uncommon. Children who hate chocolate are uncommon. Muy bien, muy bien. 
uh, non-defining George mother who lives in the U.S. has seven grandchildren. Muy bien, está, estamos ok porque ahí probablemente pues estoy hablando de uh, alguien y la persona pues ya sabe que vive en los Estados Unidos, ok. Good job, guys, con esas oraciones, ¿verdad? Creo que no se me escaparon, creo que todas las leí. No, quiero ver, aquí me faltó esta de Liu. Uh, DCEI, El Salvador is a beautiful co country that is located in the center of Central America. El Salvador, okay. Sí, sí está bien. I like it. Solo quizás, quiero ver, ¿qué le cambiaría yo? El Salvador. Ajá, me traigo esto, lo quito y lo pongo acá. El Salvador is a beautiful country. O El Salvador, that it's located in a beautiful, I mean, that is located in Central America. Quizás solo lo dejaría in Central America. Ok, it's a beautiful country. Ajá. Si yo le estoy contando esto a alguien que no sabe dónde está, dónde está como posicionado mi país, entonces le digo yo, El Salvador... El Salvador, that is located in Central America, is a beautiful country. Si la otra persona ya sabe, entonces no me complico y solo les pongo las comas, right? It's a beautiful country. Si la persona pues ya sabe eh, dónde está el país, ¿verdad? Eh, localizado. Questions, guys? Preguntas? ¿Tenemos una mejor idea de las defining y las non-defining relative clauses? Yes, I have. Muy bien, excellent. So thank you very much. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the platform because we had one exercise that is still pending. Let me see. Um, give me a second. Creo que, ay, sí, quizás se cerró. Es que yo siempre lo dejo cargando desde un principio porque, como ustedes habrán notado, a veces se queda cargando. Y, y no pasa de ahí, ¿verdad? pero yo creo que ya, ya va. Eh, déjenme ver acá el, ex, el exercise number. And this is over here. Dice number two, dice Liu. Ah, es el 3.5. Y es un listening, ¿verdad? Bye. Ok, listening, let's see. 3.4, 3.5. Veamos. Vamos a duplicar para poder verla en ambas pantallas. Y... Bye. Ok, so it says listening. Vamos a irnos para acá. Lo vamos a abrir en otra página. Me avisan si pueden escuchar. Solo déjenme compartir el sonido. Can you hear this? Listen to Carlos and Vicky talk yes, about... Yes, yes. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to play it over here. Y le voy a dejar aquí en la pantalla el ejercicio. Give me a sec. Ahí está. Listen to Carlos and Vicky talk about San Francisco. Who seems to like the city better? Hi, guys. Hi. Hiya. Thanks for agreeing to meet me here on such short notice. No problem. Well, listen, as I said to you on the phone, I'm doing a story for a magazine. I'm interviewing foreign students to get their impressions of different cities in America. Uh, well, this should only take about 10 minutes or so. Let's see. Uh, do you mind if I tape record our interview? Oh, no, not at all. Okay, then. Carlos, why don't we start with you? What do you think of San Francisco? How do you like it here so far? It's okay, I guess. Oh, you don't sound very enthusiastic. No, no, I like it. It's just that I've been so busy studying. I haven't had much time to explore the city. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, and when I have the time, well, it's so cloudy and foggy here, especially in the summer. I never thought I'd be wearing a sweater in July. Well, this is Northern California. Hey, Maybe you should move south. I hear Los Angeles is warmer. Vicky? Oh, I love it here. 
I think this is a beautiful city. The rolling hills, the views of the bay. It's very romantic. Yeah. So how do you guys spend your free time? Well, I'm studying architecture and I'm somewhat of a photographer. Really? Oh, I'm just an amateur. Anyway, I, I'm always taking pictures of the buildings in this city. You know, the Victorians, the modern skyscrapers downtown. There's such a variety of buildings in this city. The architecture is really great. I've also taken pictures of other landmarks like the Golden Gate Bridge. It looks totally different when the weather changes. Wow, that's interesting. Uh, well, Vicky, it's your turn. What do you like to do? I'm a bit of a night person. There's always a new club or a film or a great outdoor cafe to check out with my friends. And we also like to explore the different neighborhoods. It's pretty easy thanks to BART. That's Bay Area Rapid Transit. Yeah, that's a great subway system. Anyway, yesterday we went to the Italian neighborhood, North Beach, to buy some pastries and have a cup of espresso. Today, I'm going down to the Mission District to get a burrito for lunch. Hey, sounds like you like to eat Mexican food. Yes. And actually, I like the Mission a lot. It's a Latino neighborhood. We don't have anything like that where I come from. Uh, well, that's about it. Any final comments? No, not really. I'd just like to say that this is a great place to live. I'm glad that I got a chance to study here. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at the answers. It was a very long conversation, right? And if you could notice, I think that's kind of British English, right? So um, after listening to the information, tell me, who likes the city better? Who likes the city better? Vicky. Okay. Okay, very good. Let's go ahead and select Vicky here, right? Because actually she was mentioning that she likes um, the city. Then um, it says, listen again, type in the city features that Carlos and Vicky mentioned. Do you remember the city features? Cloudy, foggy, rolling hills. Okay, but from the ones that we have in the platform, de los que tenemos en la clase, ya les digo, permítame. Eh, son these ones, ya les muestro. Estos, okay, habían acá unos, and then creo que también ella menciona, estaban climate, cost of living, um, cuisine, etc. ¿Cuáles fueron los que ustedes pudieron escuchar? De los que ella menciona. Climate. Okay, climate is one of those. Very good. What else? Our neighborhood. Does she mention the neighborhood? Pero son esos eh, city features? No. Uh -huh. So climate es uno. Muy bien. ¿Cuáles son los city, otros city features que ella menciona? Veamos. Architecture. Ah, muy bien. Architecture es el segundo. ¿Cuál es el siguiente? Photographer. Mm, is photography a uh, city feature? Acuérdense no. que cuando decimos city features estamos hablando de esas cosas por las que nosotros visitamos una ciudad. Right? Entonces, eh, Los CD features están en este video. Lo voy, a, lo voy a poner, si gustan, para que ustedes vean, porque ya mencionaron dos. You have already mentioned climate and architecture. Okay, we have three more. So let's go ahead and listen to the video. And as you can see, you have it here. It says describing a city. These words describe different features of a city. Can you give a definition for each word or phrase? Which features are, are most important to you when you are choosing a city to visit? So we have architecture, cuisine, customs, festivals, historic, I think it says history, historic, and I cannot see the word, but I have a video, nightlife, scenery, and shopping. Do you know the meaning of all the words? Do you know the Night meaning of the words? Cuisine. Okay. 
Uh, nightlife, it, it's whenever you're talking about going to bars, um, going to uh, nightclubs, right? Going to a restaurant late at night, right? So it, nightlife, it's for the people who like to go out at night and those different, you know, places that they have available and that are open at that time. Cuisine, cuisine, it's a French word, right? And well, its origin is French and it talks about, I mean, it, it's it's making reference of the dishes, right? Um, that you can find in that particular, you know, city. So it's kind of a, a style of cooking or um, a, a cooking that is characteristic of a particular, you know, city, right? Um, for example, you can say something like, um, there is a restaurant uh, in El Salvador that offers French cuisine, meaning that they the style or the um, the method of cooking they have in that restaurant, it's you know uh, or, or original from French from France. I'm sorry. Okay, so that's cuisine, la cocina de ese región específicamente, right? Okay. So any other question, guys? Questions? No? Okay, let's watch the video very quickly and then we're going to continue answering the, the, the exercise. Hi, let's go over some words which will help you talk a little bit about your city. Describing a city, architecture, cuisine, costumes, festival, historical sites, nightlife, scenery, shopping. What are some important features for you? Talk to your classmates and teacher about the ideal place for you to live in. Try to use the words just learned. Okay, so as you could hear, it's historical sites, right? Historical sites from the list. De la lista que ustedes acaban de ver, chicos. What do you think are the, uh, the ones that uh, were mentioned in the exercise? Oh, let's start. Okay. It was Vicky, and you told me, oh, no sé qué lo estábamos armando, ¿verdad? I forgot it. I forgot it. Um, let me see if I can, ah, aquí está la lista, miren. Entonces teníamos architecture, ¿verdad? Cuisine, customs, festival, historical sites, nightlife, scenery, and shopping. So... Ya mencionamos dos del ejercicio. Mencionamos climate, mencionamos architecture, y nos faltan tres. Cuisine. Cuisine, muy bien. Cuisine. Dos más. ¿Cuáles son los otros dos? Shopping. ¿Perdón? Shopping. Uh, but I'm not pretty sure if they mentioned that in the, in the, in the, in the track. But no worries. I'm going to share them with you. Se los voy a compartir para que ustedes tengan la respuesta del, del, de la plataforma. Si no, va a ser como, vamos Night a agregar life. nightlife, muy bien. Entonces, de los que ustedes mencionaron, ustedes mencionaron cuatro, son cinco. Son climate, architecture, landmarks, nightlife, and cuisine. Landmarks, chicos, son como esos lugares uh, particulares. Landmark quiere decir como... Um, how can I say that in English? Todo, todos esos lugares bonitos, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, um, the cathedral, the San Salvador Cathedral, o la Catedral de San Salvador, es un landmark. O sea, es un objeto o, o es un lugar, ¿verdad? Que es como especial de ese lugar y que um, es famoso, ¿verdad? Eso es un landmark, ¿verdad? Es como una marca it's a lugar especial, okay? This is, uh, those are mentioned there, right? Landmarks, nightlife, and cuisine. Así que ahí les, les compartí el ejercicio en el... En el... Hi, Sorry. let's go over some words, which will help you talk. Ahí les compartí las palabras, y aquí las vamos a agregar también. So who likes to take pictures of different places? Is it Carlos or Vicky? Carlos. Okay, let's see if it's Carlos. Very good. What about the next one? Who is more like a night person? Vicky. Vicky. 
And who says that San Francisco is a great place to live? Be it's a great. Okay, very good. Let's go ahead and send our answers. And all of them are correct. You see? Okay. All of them are correct. Aquí, honestamente, les creo que no lo hayan podido hacer porque aquí mencionan dos que no estaban en la lista. Creo que es Climate y Landmarks no estaban en la lista. Así que no worries, ¿verdad? Aquí se las comparto yo para que ustedes puedan tener la respuesta completa. Yes, so, but, but Carlos, when they are describing the city, they, they, they mention the landmarks. Ah, he mentions the landmarks. Yes, okay. yes. Ah uh, no no I mean uh, from the list that the um, that the instructor gives you que la, la lista que le da la instructora no la incluye por eso yo se las compartí acá but yes you're right I mean they mentioned that in the conversation but it's not given in the list of features mm -hmm. um, so do you have more questions guys is everything clear or do you have uh, um, something that uh, still uh, you would like me to help you with from the platform. No? No. Okay, very good. Now let's continue. I'm going to move this. Now, uh, this information that I'm taking from the manual, eso está en, el, en su manual, en el manual que ustedes están usando. Aquí está, on page, ya les digo. It's on page number 20, right? Uh, it gives you more examples, right? Are these features of cities more important to tourists or to residents? Put the words in the columns, right? What do you think, guys? Let's go ahead and work on this exercise. So we have three different categories. We have important to tourists, important to residents, and important to both, right? And take a look at the list. We have climate, we have cost of living, crime rate, cuisine, green spaces, hotels, job market, landmarks, neighborhoods, nightlife, shopping, and transportation system. So from the ones that you can see here, guys, which ones do you think are important, right, for, uh, in this case, uh, tourists? For tourism or uh the hotels okay hotels very good what else the cuisine the cuisine, cuisine. transportation system okay night light maybe okay. landmark too okay Thank you. Anyone else? Shopping. Okay. Okay. Shopping. Very good. What else? I'm sorry. Perdón, escuché. Climate. Ah, okay. Climate. Okay. Climate, right? <clears throat> yeah. It's important because uh, if you are not used to that specific, you know, uh, weather condition, you will have a very hard time there, okay? Anything else that you would like to include here? Green space. Gra green space, okay, green space. Very good, green space. Okay, excellent. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the second category, okay? We have important to residents. Important to residents. Which ones do you think are important? Cost of living. Cost of living. Okay. Cost of living. Definitely. Cost of living. What else? Neighborhood. Crime rate. Crime, we crime rate. Very good. Neighborhoods, right? Uh, crime rate. Muy bien. Transportation system. Muy bien. Transportation system, right? Job market. The job market. Very good. Okay job market what else I think only that right 
Well, actually, aquí yo también agregaría green spaces, right? Because I think it's important, right, for me uh, to have a green space uh, close to me. Neighborhoods. Are... Yeah, aquí está, neighborhoods. Okay, and then what about the third category? Important to both for tourists and for um, uh, and for residents. Green space, green space. Okay, green space. Uh huh. Climate. Climate. Yeah. Transportation systems. Mm hmm. Trans. Shopping. Transportation system. Uh huh. Shopping. Crime rate. Shopping. Yo también incluiría uh, crime rate porque I mean you don't want to go to a place that is dangerous. Right, do you? <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, so I mean, that's one of the things that a lot of people consider before, you know, visiting, right, um, a country or a place, right? So as you can see, we have all of these features and um, these can help us to describe a city, right? And these features are, you know, uh, important to consider if you are a resident or if you are not, a, if you are planning to visit a place, you can consider some of them. So I'm going to repeat uh, the pronunciation one more time. Climate, cost of living, cost of living, right? Crime rate, crime rate, within, within. Then we have green spaces, green spaces, hotels, Hotels, job market, job market, landmarks, landmarks, neighborhoods, neighborhoods, nightlife, nightlife, shopping, shopping, and transportation system, right? Transportation system. Very good. So I'm going to share this with you through the chat. And I'm going to erase all my drawings. No, pero quizás antes se lo voy a pasar antes de borrar todo. So questions, guys? Questions so far? No questions. OK. Give me a moment. Solo que cargue aquí el WhatsApp web para compartirles el vocabulario. Uh, a ver, where are you guys? Acá está. Ahí está. There you go. So I'm going to erase all my drawings. Okay. And uh, after that, eh, we are going to be talking a little bit about adjectives. Porque ya mañana vamos a ver lo que es eh, the, cat, the different categories, ¿verdad? Uh, hay un orden para decir todos los adjetivos que tenemos, ¿verdad? Eh, sobre algo. Así que tomorrow we're going to be working with adjective order, right? Adjective order. And if you have questions also about the exercises, you can let me know by, by tomorrow. But right now I'm going to pass the attendance and I'm going to finish with the class, okay? Give me one moment. Okay, aquí está la lista. Let's begin. Uh, Alba Dir Portal Díaz. Thank you. Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Present. Thank you. Ana Francisca Garcia Nieto. Present, teacher. Thank you. Claudia Marcela Linares Urquía. Present. Thank you. Diego Anthony Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you. Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present. Thank you. Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Present, teacher. Thank you. Eh... Give me a second. Ahí está. Francisco Antonio Sánchez Jovel. Present. Thank you. Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Present. Thank you. Jose Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Present. Thank you. Eh, Jose Francisco Peña Peña. Present. Thank you. Jose Isaías Portillo Ramos. Present teacher. 
Thank you, Jose Jovito Torres Amaya. Present teacher. Thank you, Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Present teacher. Thank you. Uh, Maria Susena Ayala de Flores. Present. Thank you, Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present teacher. Thank you, Nady Ibis Mendez Albeño. Present teacher. Thank you, Rafael Antonio Morales Martinez. Present. Thank you, Rodrigo Antonio Melendez Morales. Present. Thank you, Rodrigo Daniel Melendez Mayen. Present. Thank you, Rosa Maria de Milagro Perez de Paz. I'm here. Thank you, Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present teacher. Thank you, Jensi Marlene Leon Lopez. Present teacher. Thank you so much. And Zulma Beatriz Perez Caldanes. Present. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you again, guys, for joining today. Thank you for being here. And tomorrow we're going to continue with the rest of the topics from um, section number three and the midterm exam. So have a good night and let's meet good tomorrow. Night. Good, good night. night. Good night, guys. Good night.